Hello and uh, a warm welcome to the Stables of the Virtuous Woman with Reverend Sylvia now. We are going to continue on our series on the armor of God. This is a new beginning, new season. And the Lord is saying in Isaiah 43 verses 18 to 19 that he is doing a new thing in our lives. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you that you are our God that you are our deliverer, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that even as we get into your word, mighty God, may your blessing and your anointing come upon your people as they listen to your word. May they be restored. May somebody be encouraged. May they be uplifted. May they be healed. And as I speak, my Lord and my God, I pray a fresh anointing upon myself that I will speak your word with excellence, my Lord and my God, and that your word shall be confirmed with signs and wonders and miracles in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are continuing in the book of Ephesians, and today we are talking about the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. We're talking about the weapons, spiritual weapons of warfare, and we have reached now the helmet of salvation. We started with the belt of, belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, fit fitted with uh, the readiness of preaching the gospel of peace, the, 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 the shield of faith, and then we are now on the helmet of salvation. It's the helmet of salvation. So what is salvation? And we are reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 10, chapter 6, verses 10 to 18. Chapter 6, verses 10 to 18. And today we are reading just verse 17, because that is where the, the, the helmet of salvation is. Verse 17 reads, Take the helmet... Of salvation and the sword of the spirit take the helmet of salvation we are talking about the weapons of warfare helmet of salvation is one of those weapons of warfare what is the helmet of salvation this can also be helmet of salvation is salvation itself and it can also be referred to as redemption or deliverance from our sins redemption from our sins or deliverance from our sins how the Lord Jesus Christ died for us on the cross of Calvary shedding his blood that we may be redeemed from our sins that we may be forgiven of our sins this is very important because this is the foundation of the walk of faith this is the foundation of Christianity and with that our Lord Jesus Christ had to die for us it was imperative that he died for us his blood had to be shed in order for our sins to be forgiven. Why is salvation important? Why is salvation important? Because like I have said before, it is the foundation. It is the foundation of our Christian work. It is the foundation of our faith. It is the only way that man would be, that man's fallen nature could be restored back to God. It is the only way that man's fallen nature could be restored back to God by reconciling and the blood of Jesus, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ on that cross of Calvary. Our sins were not only forgiven, we were not only redeemed, but it was the only way that our fallen nature could be reconciled back to God. And when we go to the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 10, it reads, For if when we were God's enemies... We were reconciled to him through the death of his son. If when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled back to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we also be saved through his, his, his life? So we have been reconciled back to the Father because of the death of the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how much more shall we be saved in this life? How much more shall we live a good life through his life once we have been saved, once we have been reconciled back to the Father? We are talking about the armor of, the armor of um, putting on the full armor of God. We're talking about the armor of God because without the armor of God, earlier on in Ephesians 6, the Bible is saying in verse 10, it's saying that when, so that we may be able to stand when the day of evil comes. Because that day of evil will come. You know the mind, our minds, is always the battleground of the enemy. 
it's our, it also it's always there because there is there, there's a fight between the flesh and the spirit. When you are born again, the, your spirit is the one that gets born again. Your flesh does not get born again. But God, there's a provision for the flesh even there. There is a provision for the flesh. Because when you go to the book of Romans, you, you, it, it talks about the mind being renewed. That the mind will be renewed. There is always a war between your flesh and your spirit. And that is why you don't understand, even after you have been born again, even after you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and you say, but I have received Christ, why am I still struggling? It's because there are two forces there. There is your flesh, and then there's your spirit man. The spirit man gets born again. But you see, all along you have been living your life, and your, 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 your flesh, the mind, has been the dominant, dominant factor. So if it is the, the mind is the dominant factor, and the mind does not get born again, it has to be renewed. It has to be renewed. And that is the only way. The start of everything, even the renewal of your mind, it all starts from salvation. Putting on the helmet of salvation. In the book of Luke 22 and verse 44, the Bible reads, And being in anguish, this is, we, we're talking about the, 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 the helmet of salvation being the, one of the spiritual weapons of warfare. Praise the Lord. So this is how we fight the, the, the weapon or the, the, the spiritual warfare with our helmet of salvation. The, the blood of Jesus is being shed on the cross for the sins of my, mankind. And this he is doing willingly. And how many times does this happen? So when you go into the word of God, you find that seven times, we see it seven times that the blood of Jesus is shed for us. Seven times the helmet of salvation. The first one that you look at is in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 22 and verse 44. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. And being in anguish, Jesus was in anguish. He was in the garden of Gethsemane. And this is the time when he was just, the legion, that, that company of men who were coming to betray him. And that is how Jesus, I mean, Judas betrayed him. It was in the garden. He was praying. He knew the time for crucifixion was, had come. And he was in anguish. He knew exactly what lay before him. It was not an easy walk. He had even prayed, Father, if it is possible, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. So he knew exactly what was before him. And he was in prayer. And while he was praying in Gethsemane, the, he was sweating. The sweat, when it was dropping to the ground, it was dropping blood, droplets of blood. That is how intense his prayer was. That is how intense his prayer was. Now he was in the... In the Garden of Gethsemane. And you know, when you go back now to where Adam also sinned, Adam was in the Garden of Eden when he sinned. When Adam ate of the fruit of life, the one that he should not have eaten, the one who, whose, whose tree was in the middle of the garden, where Eve handed over to him to say, here it is, eat with me. Adam lost his authority. Because when God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness, in the image, God molded man using the soil, the dead, the soil, molded man. And then he breathed in him the breath of life and the power coming straight from God into man, giving man, giving Adam the authority even to be able to name the animals, giving the animals names, even giving us as women, woman, this shall be woman, flesh of my flesh and bone of my bones. He had that authority. He had that power. But guess what? Because God had commanded him to go and tend the garden. Now, tending the garden means that even us as Christians, tending the garden, it means wherever we are, we are supposed to go and 
make the garden grow. Tend this garden, not only here in Eden, but wherever you are going, go and start a garden of God. Go and minister the word of God so that nobody is left behind. Let everybody be able to hear the gospel of peace. Let everybody be able to hear the gospel of the good news so that they can know, so that they can partake in the promises of God, in the goodness of God. And so here it is, droplets. He is in the Garden of Gethsemane. Adam is sinning in the Garden of Eden. And Jesus comes to correct it in the, in the Garden again of Gethsemane. He is praying and just about to be crucified. So that is the first. We are talking about there are seven instances where he bled for us, where the blood of Jesus dropped for us for our salvation, because I'm talking about the helmet of salvation in the armor of God. And so the next one is that in Matthew 27, verse 26, but he had Jesus, this, this is Pilate. Now, Jesus was now uh, brought, the, the, the people were accusing him in Matthew 27, he was being now going, he was towards the end of his ministry on earth, and he was going towards the end of being crucified. And so he's brought before the governor Pilate. And then he also releases, when they are demanding for him to, to condemn Jesus so that he is crucified, what he does is, in verse 26 of uh, chapter 27, he releases Barabbas. Barabbas was one of the thugs that had been uh, um, that had been arrested. So he releases Barabbas, but he hands Jesus over to be crucified. Jesus had been beaten with 39 lashes. Blood was shed. He was whipped 39 times. And in Isaiah 53, verse 5, he, it says, the Bible says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. And he was whipped so that we could be healed. He was beaten so that we could be whole. That is in the New Living Translation. And he was whipped so that we could be healed. Blood again is being shed for our sins. He was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our sins. Beaten so that we could be made whole whipped so that we could be healed. Jesus is blood. Jesus is bleeding for mankind. Jesus is bleeding for the salvation of mankind. And while he, the blood was flowing on his body, inside also he was bleeding. These are the seven ways that we see how Jesus was bleeding for mankind, how he was shedding his blood in order for man to be redeemed, in order for man's sin to be atoned for, in order for man to be able to be reconciled back to God. I'm talking about the helmet of salvation and the importance of salvation in our lives. And the punishment that brought peace, the punishment that brought peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed. That's why we are able to pray and quote the word of God in Isaiah 53, 5. When we are praying for healing, we are quoting that word. And when we stand on that word, because Jesus bled, Jesus' blood has the power to heal. And when we quote that word, we stand on that word for healing. God watches over his word to perform it. So he watches over it and he does not allow it to go back, to go back, to return to him void until it accomplishes, until we receive healing. Jesus bled for our atonement. And he endured the crown of thorns. The next one is he endured the crown of thorns. In Matthew 27, verse 29, 29 he says, And then twisted together a crown of thorns and set on his head. A crown of thorns was twisted together and it was set on his head. He endured even that cross. And blood was flowing from the head onto the face. Blood was being shed for the atonement of man's sins, 
man's sins and the lifestyle of sin to come to an end for the forgiveness of sins. His hands were nailed to the cross. Matthew 27 and verse 35. When they crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. His hands were, were, were his hands. Oh, We are talking about it. The, 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 the helmet of salvation. And we are talking about the seven times that Jesus' blood dropped to the ground, that Jesus' blood was shed for us. Thank you, Jesus. And his feet were also nailed to the cross. His feet were nailed to the cross in Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing and nothing will harm you. His feet were nailed to the cross. You will trample over snakes. You will trample over, you will drink deadly poison and nothing will harm you because the Lord Jesus already shed his blood for the atonement of man, for the atonement of our sins. And this is how the, this helmet of salvation is a weapon of warfare. When you receive Christ as your personal savior, when you renounce your sins, 2 Corinthians says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they become a new creation. All that kind of lifestyle, all your old lifestyle, all the sins that you committed, all the guilt that you are feeling, all the hopelessness that you are feeling, all that when you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and personal Savior, all that is behind you. Or you become a new creation because you enter into the kingdom of God. You enter into God's families, family where his mercies, his promises, his promises, you get to enjoy the promises of God. Where his mercies, his goodness and his mercies, they follow you all your days of you. Where you are protected by the glory of God. Where you are protected by the blood of Jesus. Where you receive healing, that is all in salvation. You only enjoy those benefits when you have received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And with that, I would like to invite you. To just follow, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, just follow me on this prayer, simple prayer, and with that you will receive and you will come into the kingdom of God and into the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you. Father, I thank you that today I have heard your word. And today, my Lord and my God, as you have touched me, I repent of my sins. Thank you, Lord, for dying me on the, for me on the cross. Thank you, Lord, for shedding your blood for me, for redeeming me, for reconciling me back to the God the Father. And I promise from today onwards, I will walk with you and I'll trust you and you'll be my Lord and personal Savior in the name of Jesus. Amen. And with that, congratulations. Get to a church that will teach you the word of God, where you'll be taught how to pray, where you will be with fellow Christians. Go and learn and be with fellow Christians in a church, a Bible teaching church. Until next time, you have heard the word. This has been Reverend Sylvia now from the Stables of the Virtuous Woman. Shalom and God bless you.